Um, I have been through the mill. Um, it's like one thing after the other. Um, so, <laughs> um, I woke up uh, last Sunday, not this Sunday, but the Sunday before, with like pain in my tooth and um, I had pain in, in my wisdom tooth before. I, I, I said in a video before what growing old means. Um, and for me, it was I lost all my bottom molars. Um, I The first one they tried to save was my wisdom tooth. And I remember um, they wanted to pull it. And I was like, please don't pull it. Just fill in the cavities. Thinking that I'm going to save all my molars. And they had the worst time with that wisdom tooth that they decided they're not going to go through that with my other molars. And they pulled my molars. Um, including the wisdom tooth on this side. So they <laughs> they gave me dentures and said, well, it's a good thing you kept that wisdom tooth because the dentures are supposed to hang on to a tooth. And they drilled a tiny, tiny hole in one of my front teeth. And so it clasped, clasped onto that and clasped onto my wisdom tooth. Um, I wore them for like a, a day or two because I don't know, I couldn't eat in them. It was horrible. I could not eat. Uh, this was like 10 years ago. I remember I made my delicious Puerto Rican food and I go to take that first bite and taste it. I couldn't taste a thing. The food kept going in, into the dangers. I couldn't taste anything. I couldn't eat anything. And I was like, how do people do this? I said never again. So I basically chewed with that one <laughs> wisdom tooth on the bottom on my right side. So, you know, it was a little sensitive. And uh, a couple, like a month or two ago, maybe a couple of months ago, um, I started feeling pain in that tooth. And I was like, you know, I must have another cavity in there. So I just was rinsing. Let me tell you, my husband, you guys, my husband, I hated Listerine. He always told me the answer to everything is Listerine. Like my Greek wedding where the answer to everything is that fantastic spray or whatever they called it. They use that spray Windex or whatever. And so I wouldn't, that stuff is disgusting to me. But I started rinsing it out, you know, every night. Um, I used it for a week and the pain went away. So I was like, okay. You know, if it was a cavity, it wouldn't have gone away. So I didn't think anything of it. And about two weeks ago, I felt as if there was a piece of food stuck behind that wisdom tooth. And I'm like, what? You know, what the heck? And when I, I went to go feel back there, I felt like this hole, a huge like hole at the bottom of my the back of my tooth. I'm like, oh boy, that can't be good. Um, and, um... Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I didn't think anything of it. I just, I, I, I was, you know, I just keep gargling with the Listerine to keep it clean because you know how dentists are. They don't like pulling teeth. Um, they want to do root canals. They need to keep their house, summer homes or whatever, or their house in, you know, the ritzy part of Houston, wherever that may be. <laughs> their house in Galveston. And they won't pull teeth, they will do root canals because they want that money. And that's about $3,000, which is outrageous. Um, so yeah, and, and then they won't tell you if you need a filling or not. They say, this is always what they say, until we get you in the chair and open up that tooth, we won't know what you need. So I think to fill it is 300 or so, I don't know. I think it costs the same thing as pulling. I'm not sure. Maybe a little more. But they, once they get you on the table, they're like, no, you need a root canal. And so, you know, they're slick. So, they've drilled into your tooth already and you're screwed, right? So, I don't I don't like dentists because of that. I went through that with my son, with my husband, with myself. Um, it, it was just really frustrating. So, um, last Sunday morning started hurting and I'm gargling you know rinsing it with Listerine and it's not helping the next day I could not eat I could not eat I could not swallow my whole face was like swollen here uh, it was so painful 
So I'm calling all these different dentists. This, this just frustrates me about my life because it's always these little emergencies that occur. Sometimes big emergencies, sometimes small emergencies, but with equal impact. And so I'm frustrated because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing stuff uh, before Steve, my son goes back to school. And, you know, that pain was horrible. That pain was starting to shoot up into my brain. So I'm calling around. I have, uh, we decided to get dental and vision insurance because it was reasonable. It was very reasonable. And depending on your glasses, you get a free pair of glasses. And the dental offers a lot of coverage. Um, so, and it was like for really cheap. So we just said, let's just go ahead and do it. Although I got screwed up with the glasses though. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm calling around and it's the same thing. Um, you know, we won't know until we get you on the table. Can you give me a ballpark figure? No, we really can't. We can't, no, no. And so I made appointments with a few different places. Um, they took my insurance, you know, and finally, um, my, my brother's fiance told me about a place uh, from her town, which is where my kids go to the doctor. And I was like, well, it's far, but if it's going to be a, a reasonable price, then I might as well do it. So it's a wisdom tooth. Um, usually those got to go because they do get infected. Uh, one place, I think, quoted me 200, I think. The other one wouldn't tell me. But again, a ballpark figure. We don't really know until we get you on the table. <laughs> and when I called the clinic... Um, in the town that my son goes to school, they were like, this is what it costs to, to pull it. This is how much your insurance costs. Um, you know, so this is what it's going to be. And so I appreciate it that, you know, I was told what it was going to be. And it was really, really reasonable. It was under $100 to pull it. I'm in severe pain. I go down there and the doctor didn't even... Oh, by the way, the checkup was free. I hope that that wasn't the only... I hope that wasn't... I only got one free checkup because she didn't do anything, really. She All she did was some, looked in my mouth and it was all red in there. And she didn't even do a checkup or not. She just looked in my mouth and said, you need to have it pulled, but we can't do it till the swelling goes down. And that's what the other places were telling me. We don't know if we're going to be able to pull it today. You know, you're probably going to need antibiotics. And, you know, I just, I, I hated that, um, the uncertainty of it. So, you know, I was dying. I'm like, please, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> please just pull it. They say, it is too swollen. We can't do anything until that swelling goes down. So they give me the antibiotics. I'm taking that religiously. I'm taking the pain pills that I got from all the other times I went to the doctor um, what I did was I took the strongest pain pill I had to sleep. Um, and I would take that twice, right, right before I went to bed. And when I woke up in the middle of the night and then the other one I was taking as directed, um, every four hours. Um, that one wasn't as strong. That one was the codeine. It made me a little bit sleepy, but not too much. Whereas the other one helped me to sleep. I'm not allowed to take aspirin. Aspirin keeps my blood pressure down. And she told me. And my blood pressure is not at 90. Uh, it has to be 150 over 80. No, 150 over 90, she said. If it is anything more than that, she will not pull that tooth. So now I'm like frustrated. And I can't have the aspirin because aspirin is what helps my my blood pressure to stay down. But I, I have been taking a, a blood pressure pill that doesn't seem to be giving me side effects. So I was taking that religiously. Taking my, as directed, every four hours. Um... For the pain, the codeine I was taking um, every um, every eight hours for my antibiotics. I couldn't concentrate on anything but that pain. And after a day or two, I could feel that the swelling had gone down. Like on the third day, I was able to eat. Like the second day, I was able to swallow. The third day, I was able to eat. And, um, and then by about the fourth day, I was actually able to eat on that side and I had to catch myself because I was afraid that food would get stuck in there. 
So I'm, I'm eating on this side with just my top molar and I guess my bicuspids, I guess. And um, I had, as soon as I was able to eat, I had to go on my liquid diet for my colonoscopy. So I lost a few pounds last week. Um, I do that liquid diet as if I wasn't suffering enough. <laughs> I do that liquid diet. Um, you have to drink this barrier something. It they they first now what they have now is they have bottles like two or three bottles that you drink um, like the afternoon before the night before and the morning up. That was seventy dollars. I guess my insurance company didn't cover it. I was like, yeah, no, you better prescribe me something else. So she prescribed that big gallon thing that I saw my husband take and vomit. And when I spoke to the nurse, I called the nurse about the directions because it didn't say when I was supposed to start taking that. And um, she told me that, I, I said, you know, what if I start vomiting? My husband couldn't even finish his. And she's like, it's very important you finish it because if we see any anything in there, we're going to reschedule the colonoscopy. And... I said, but my husband was vomiting. She said, well, your doctor should have prescribed you nausea medicine. And I said, no, she didn't. But I had some from the last time. <coughs> from the last two times I was in the hospital. So basically, I'm saving money on those medications. Um, but anyway, she, I, she said, you know what? It's only men that vomit. Women usually can handle it. And I said, well, if I can handle that fiber stuff, I probably can handle this. So I... Um, my, my antibiotics were pretty reasonable. They were like $10. That's not too bad. Um, the bariatric, whatever liquid, that was free. Thank God, fully covered by the insurance company. So I started drinking that stuff. And I started out by hold. I, what I do is I take, took a deep breath. And I exhale, hold my nose, and I chug a lug about 10 gulps. But as the day went on, <laughs> It's getting to eight to six to five to four. And finally I had about that much left in this big, you know, gallon. And I was like, I can't take this anymore. I cannot take this anymore. It was about 8.30 at night. I chug a look that thing to the, to the, uh, the very last, and there still was a drop in there. The last gulp that was in my mouth, I couldn't even tolerate it. I just spit it out. And then I went to bed. It was like 8. I don't usually go to bed that early unless I'm sick. I went to bed around 8, 8.30. I got up. I, I, they wanted me to be in the hospital at, at 9.30. So I got up at 7 and, you know, just put on a little bit of powder, a little bit of mascara, a little bit of lip gloss, and went to the hospital. And I was a little annoyed because they asked me to come extra early and then they had me sitting there waiting. But it wasn't too bad um they had me all prepped and ready by about a, maybe 11 and the doctor wasn't coming till 12. so you know you i had x-rays they always want to make sure you're not going to die especially because of my weight i had blood work to make sure my blood sugar was good which it was thank god which surprised me because um i was i, I was allowed to go on a like a jello and pop um it had to be pop nothing dairy nothing creamy not even the non-dairy creams. Um, so I was having sh a lot of sugar the day before because I had my pops. And I wasn't getting the sugar-free. No, that's the, I'm already drinking this disgusting bariatric stuff. I'm not going to eat the disgusting sugar-free stuff. I'd rather have something unsweetened than have that nasty sugar-free stuff. So I had a lot of sugar and my sugar was fine. And my blood pressure, uh, I usually take one a day. I took At night, I took one again that morning. So my blood pressure was 150 over 80, which was for me, that's great. And um, so um, I was all ready to go and they, you know, IV'd me and uh, took me into the room and then I don't remember nothing. I'm out and wake up and um, um, they told me that I, and they found two polyps um, and they found uh, de de diverticulitis or du diverticulitis or something it's uh, when you have pockets in your intestines and those pockets could get food trapped in them and you get infections um, my father uh, found out that's what my father had when, this is why he was so careful with what he ate and my son had that when he was a little boy and I've never had a problem with like 
getting sick like that. I maybe when I was a little girl, but not now. So you know, she found the two polyps and they removed them immediately. And they're gonna they're sending it off to the lab to see if they're cancerous or not. That's where your cancer comes from is the polyps. For some reason, I'm not really worried about it. I don't know. I'm just and I worry about everything, but for some reason, I'm not worried about this. Um, and and you know, and other than that, oh. <laughs> I don't know how, I think she said she found hemorrhoids, and I said, where where the, are the hemorrhoids? She says, in your anus. I was like, the only reason I could possibly have hemorrhoids is from the day before, because my butthole suffered a thousand deaths drinking that stuff. That was horrible. So, I, I don't know. I hope that goes away. I don't know if I need something for it. I'm supposed to see her next week. So, <laughs> I'll ask her about that, because it, it does still hurt. <laughs> Anyway, uh, other than that, I was clean. She found a couple of pockets and the two polyps and removed them. So, I mean, I, I felt good about that. I mean, if I was full of polyps, um, they, sometimes you have like bacterial infections in there and, um, you know, not just, just the couple of pockets that never bothered me my whole life and, and just those two polyps. And my mom said the same thing happened to her and they were benign. But, you know, since my grandfather died of cancer and I do have cancer in my family, it's something that... I needed to do and I procrastinated for a year and a half um, and everybody's telling me the actual colonoscopy is a breeze you don't remember anything it's it's drinking that stuff that's disgusting so I really hope that I don't have to do it once a year I know when people have cancer they have to do it every six months um, and you usually I think they say that if you have nothing it's every 10 years but if you, they find something it's every five years so I hope I don't have to do this every year because that was nasty Oh, oh, and then I did what, finally, Monday, I go to, <laughs> I was off the pain meds, finally, after the, the colonoscopy. All they told me was to eat light for that first day. Get the frig out of here. I've not eaten for a week, and I had Taco Bell. <laughs> I, was, I was in the mood for Taco Bell so bad, and I said, I'm having, I stuffed my face with Taco Bell. Um, and then like finish the jellos that I have. I still have the pops there because they are very sugary and I kind of got used to not having so much sugar. Um, so yeah, so um, the day before my, I was supposed to have my wisdom tooth removed, you know, and, I, and I'm, you know, religiously taking, religiously taking my, my antibiotics, religiously taking my blood pressure pills. We never celebrated our son graduating, getting his GED, well, I should say getting his GED and getting all A's. And so um, we took him out to a nice restaurant, finally, and I ate meat. I don't usually eat meat, but this meat was pretty well seasoned and salted, um, and I ate meat. And meat sends your blood pressure shooting up, and I'm like, oh, crap. What am I going to do? If my blood pressure's not down, she's not going to take out my tooth. So to make up for this, like a big dummy, I took two high blood pressure pills in the morning. I don't usually take blood pressure pills in the morning. I only took one right before my colonoscopy, but I hadn't eaten at all that week. So I took two, and that was a huge mistake because um, the side effect of this particular pill is dizziness making you feel like you're gonna faint which is exactly how i felt right, right now she has me on a low dose but she told me this is too low it's probably really not going to do anything but let's i guess kind of ease your body into it before we hire the dose so i figured what can it go wrong i was feeling sick all day i was kind of scared to drive i drive there and because i was feeling sick my blood pressure shot up she was ready to send me home and she says look just relax i downloaded peaceful music you know like you're at the beach type of music the, you know the butterflies and the birds flying <laughs> and i'm listening to that and they come in about 10 minutes later and it went down but it's still high she's like look i'm gonna work on somebody else if this still doesn't go down you're gonna have to come back first thing in the morning usually first thing in the morning is when your blood pressure is at its lowest Okay, I'm sitting there. I'm getting frustrated. 
The lights are hurting my eyes because, you know, you're laid back. My daughter took my keys and didn't return them, so I'm a worry more saying, why she didn't return the keys? She went to the car to get something. I said, oh, man, I need my sunglasses. So I start getting up. And getting out of that chair was so hard. My heart starts pumping. I'm walking around trying to get, I say, let me get my crochet. Let me get my sunglasses. Let me see if this is going to help me relax. And I said, okay, I got to relax before they come. And they took so long with the other person. If they had checked me before that, I was, I was like almost falling asleep. So I said, okay, it would have been perfect. But now my heart's palpitating because I'm try, trying to get out of that chair. It was a pain in the neck. I got in out of that chair a couple of times. And I'm like, I felt so defeated. And I'm like, she said, we're going to do it. And I'm like, whatever, go ahead. I know you're going to send me home. It went down 140 over 90. Don't ask me how that happened. But I was just, thank you, God. She starts sticking needles. My tongue is all numb. Um, but it was it wore off my tongue really fast. One of the problems I've had in the past is that it doesn't work. The it doesn't um, the the numbing doesn't help me, you know. And it's not enough. Like it'll just wear off really quick. So I was scared that was happening. But she stuck me with so many needles all around the gum, and in the cheeks, deep into the cheeks. That was probably more painful. I thought it was going to be in there an hour. I watched videos on how it works. They got to do like this oral surgery. But I guess since I didn't have it, I don't have any teeth. She just pulled it, came out like in, like in less than 60 seconds. It came right out. And it didn't even, it, the roots were weird. They're like really fat roots. Um, And I expected hooks, no hooks. You know, I was ready to go by myself a pair of whatever those is, pliers or whatever. I even looked up on YouTube how to remove your own tooth if she did not remove that tooth. And my mom's telling me, I'm talking to my mom about it. She says, you're crazy. You're going to kill yourself. So, you know, that thing is deep in the bone. Sometimes they have to cut away at the bone. That thing came out in less than 60 seconds. Huge hole in my mouth. She's telling me. She's telling me that I have to make sure that that clots don't spit, don't suck through straws, because sometimes that loosens the clot and you get what they call a dry, dry hole or something, and then it, it'll swell up again, blah, blah, blah. And um, <clears throat> I mean, the pulling of the tooth was nothing compared to the pain I was in afterwards. And so I'm scared to, I, I didn't, I didn't even brush my teeth for like two days. I, I, I didn't even, I just, just like lightly brushed my teeth. <laughs> you know, I try, I didn't want to touch it, you know, um, that corner and it hurt me more. The, the, where all the, she stuck all the needles and, and after I had taken painkillers, I had to go back on the painkillers and everybody's saying, oh, watch out. You don't got to take it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm taking it as directed. It's not like if I'm doubling up on the painkillers, I was an idiot for doubling up. <laughs> blood pressure pills but I'm not I don't want to you know turn into a drug addict so um I took I took painkillers the whole day I think um I didn't even need any at night though I don't think but in the middle of the night I woke up in pain and that was it um I'm back on my naproxen um and that that does the trick when my when my gum is hurting me or feels kind of sore the naproxen helps so that was cool. It was really painful for about a day, maybe a day and a half, and that was it. Thank God. So I could see that. I could see the clot. I look in my mouth, and I could see the clot. So I'm trying to be really careful. She told me to do soft foods for a few days, but last night I was so hungry. I wanted my veggie patties. It does still hurt, like, to chew a little bit. So for two days, I was eating my pops, finishing up my jello, um... And, you know, trying to do soft foods like peanut butter. Um, you know, I use the low sugar, low salt peanut butter. I was munching on soft cheese. I needed my protein. My body was craving the protein. And and that was it. Today, I had to eat. I had, I had to eat. So I just try to eat slowly on this side. And like I said, I could see the clot. It's clotted. And, you know, hopefully it will heal soon. Um, so... Thank God all of that is over.